שלום וברכה. I don't have the capability of Shkedi to tell you stories in the air. He is the Air Force, sign from the ground forces. <laughs> But I have to admit that I, everything that he said is really something that is, he is speaking from his heart. And I can't really affiliate myself with what he's describing because also I'm unfortunately coming from a family that survived the Holocaust. And I know exactly what his father felt. And uh, each family in the Jewish nation have a different story and a very unique one. If you are comparing the problems that Israel is facing and the challenges, then we are the largest and the biggest superpower in the world. We have uh, the quantity of problems and tourists like no country in the world, even though we are a small country of uh, a few million people. But the problems that we are and the challenges that we are facing are enormous. I try in a short period of time try to discuss a little bit some of those challenges that Israel is facing. I will start with the first one, the Palestinian challenge. We are already engaged almost 20 years with the dialogue with the Palestinians. And unfortunately, we failed. I don't think that we draw the right lessons from our failures. And it's a necessity to find a way and to find a solution for the Palestinian problem. I think we have to pay attention to the process that is shaping up in the Palestinian community, especially in the dialogue and the conflicts between the Palestinian Authority and the Hamas, and the consequences of what is by mistake known as the Arab Spring. Another issue that we have to take in consideration how the Palestinian Authority will be seen after the days of Abu Mazen. It's a very serious problem, and any solution that we'll, we'll deal and find in this, on this very challenging problems will have to take in consideration all the facts that I mentioned before. The Iranian challenge is a very serious one is the most uh, challenging military and political problem that Israel is facing. It's very much related to the goals of the Iranian revolution, and especially about the impact that the Iranian regime wants to become the leading of the Muslim world. We have to take in consideration the impact of the long war between Iraq and Iran that was taking for long, eight year, long years and the Iranian paid hundreds of thousands of casualties. The Iranian now are involved internally in a conflict inside the Muslim world and they're trying to acquire a military uh, nuclear capability that is uh, threatening the stability of the region and probably will engage an armed race not only in the Middle East but in the region at all and probably in the world. Iran is playing a role of destabilizing, a negative role of destabilizing the region and trying to present itself as a superpower in the region and they would like to become a focal point in having an impact on the region, on economy, and especially of leading the Muslim world. Let's not forget that Iran is sitting in the center where 65% of the oil, res well, oil, oil reserves, oil of the world is, are located. And any impact the Iranian will have on the region no doubt about it, will have a, an impact on the economy of the world. The next challenge is the Arab Spring. 
Let's not, let's not forget that the Arab society is still a tribal society. And in most of the countries, there are unsatisfied groups who are not identifying themselves with the regime. And the impact of the international crisis, the economic crisis, created a very serious economic situation in those countries. The social mobility in there is almost not existing. And let's not forget that Islam is not only a religion, is a culture that is crossing every aspect of life. This conflict is not about democracy and freedom. This conflict is about domination. Who is going, what kind of ideology is going to control and lead in those countries. And unfortunately, today, the most organized opposition that are existing in those countries are coming from the house and the schools of the Muslim Brotherhood and the Salafis, and by definition, if they are going to gain in the long run, they might create a very serious challenge to Israel. We have to pay to one fact uh, a very cautious uh, understanding. One, we see that the problem is passing on almost with no problem at all in kingdoms, in countries where you have kings because there is no real debate about the legitimacy of the regime. From the other hand, in all the countries where you have that the regime was taken by force, by military rulers, the question of the legitimacy of the regime is still existing, and as such, the process of the, what we are calling so-called the Arab Spring is passing with a very serious amount of uh, violence. It's happening in Syria, it's happening in Egypt, it's happening in, in, in Libya, in Yemen, in Somalia, and other countries. The next challenge is the terror challenge. We today are facing most of the terror attacks that we are suffering are coming from two schools, one of the Shia school, the other one from the Sunni school. The Shia schools are supported, sponsored, and armed by the Iranian, uh, the Hezbollah. They are located on our northern border, in, especially in the area of Lebanon. But let's not forget that we have Shia communities not only there, but in other countries. In the long term, they are creating a very serious problem, not only to us, but also to the current regime in those countries. The Sunni organization, like the Hamas and the Islamic Jihad, are creating a very serious challenge for us because they, unfortunately, they are increasing their influence inside the Palestinian community, and not only inside the Palestinian community, but even though they suffer a very serious blow by killing Osama bin Laden, I think that the ideas that the Salafis and the Wahhabis are leading are still existing and rooted very deeply in almost every Islamic country. The Global Jihad is an organization that, gladly for us, we are not the only one who is facing this organization. I believe the West, as a state, as an entity, is facing the challenge of those organizations, and I think it's a cooperation between all the different countries on this issue could play a very vital role how to overcome this challenge. The last challenge that I will want to discuss is the new form of anti-Semitism that is existing today in the world. We started to see an unholy alliance between impossible groups from one side, radical Islamic groups, from the other side, left-wing radicals, and right-wing radicals, and in some group countries, even academic groups are supporting, and especially when some of them are challenging the legitimacy of the State of Israel to exist, is creating in the long term a very serious challenge to uh, our country. Nevertheless, some of those groups are involved in terror activities against Jewish targets around the world, and unfortunately, 
in the last few months with such, a, such attacks in India, in France, in Ukraine, and other countries. What are the lessons that we have to drive from those challenges? The first one is time is in essence. We need to find a very quick solution to the Palestinian problem. I believe it's had a, a very devastating impact on our relationship with the Western countries and creating some even debates with our biggest friend, the United States. Uh, I think that in, as a result of the Arab Spring, I think that we are not going to see any immediate conventional threat in the next two to three years because most of those countries, especially those countries who were in the past involved in wars against Israel, are so occupied with the, the, their internal problems that I don't see an immediate military threat directed against Israel. The Arab League is a less confronting Arab League that we ever knew. All those radical elements like Saddam Hussein, Gaddafi, are not among us anymore. And even Bashar Assad, who used to play a pivot role in approaching with a radical approach against Israel, is now involved very much internally in a very serious problem in the own country. We can identify a large amount of common interest between us and many of the Arabic pragmatic states. And in some aspect, we are sitting in the same camp together with those countries, especially on the issue, on the Iranian issue, and on the issue of radical Islamic organizations are threatening those countries as they're threatening Israel. We, I believe that the best way how to tackle the Shia terrorist problems is to find a way that Bashar Assad will leave his power and by leading and allowing Syria to become dominated by the Sunnis, probably we are going to see a greater influence of the Gulf countries in Saudi Arabia, and I believe it will have a moderated impact on, on Syria. It will eliminate a great deal of support to the Hezbollah in Lebanon. It will stop the channel of smuggling into the hands of the Hezbollah and will create a serious declining of influence by the Hezbollah in Lebanon itself. The last issue, I believe that uh, we'll have to deal with the Iranian issue in one way or another. Uh, I agree with the Prime Minister, Ulmaut, uh, who said that we don't have differences about the level of the threats. We have a difference. What is the best way how to deal with it? And I agree totally that the Iranian threat is not only an Israeli problem. It's first of all an uh, international problem, and it should be solved by the international community. It presented a serious threat to the countries in the Gulf, to Saudi Arabia, even to Iraq. And unfortunately, the, this regime is acting very cleverly, and they are smart. They are masters in, the, in diplomacy, and I believe they will do everything in their power, even though I don't think that they are running into the project, but they are going very cautiously to achieving and to acquire such a threat. I believe that this problem should be dealt internationally, and I believe one of the biggest mistakes is to translate the conflict between Israel and Iran as an issue for the world between those two countries. It's a serious threat to the region, it's a serious threat to the world economy, it's a serious threat to the stability of the region, and I believe it's creating, if it will not be dealt in the right way, it will lead to an armed race, a nuclear armed race, not only in the Middle East, but in the world. Thank you very much.